early in my career, I remember being fascinated with uh, what I first read about dimethyl sulfoxide, or DMSO, and it, it's a byproduct of the wood industry, which probably explains why it ended up uh, appearing first, I think, in the Northwest. The potential seemed great, and there have been some 40,000 papers published on its chemistry. So we are at ASH to talk about treatment of bleeding in severely thrombocytopenic patients with transfusion of DMSO, and it is uh, cryopreserved platelets. And I'm with uh, Dr. Cheryl Slichter, who is an MD and director of the Platelet Transfusion Research at uh, Bloodworks Northwest Research Institute and a professor of medicine at the Division of Hematology at the University of Washington School of Medicine. Both of those are in Seattle. Yes. First off, do you remember back when you first read about DMSO? I remember thinking, wow, this stuff is really interesting. Can you go back? Well, that, that was I, a few years ago. I actually published an abstract, never a full paper, on DMSO cryopreserved platelets. And the first DMSO cryopreserved platelet transfusion I gave was to a bone marrow transplant patient in Seattle who, whose next uh, date that day was with a dentist. Oh, I had never known, but DMSO smells like rotten eggs. So I said, Please, and it's uh, exhaled through the breath. So I said, please uh, apologize to the dentist. I had no idea this was going to happen. So, yeah, we, we uh, in the early 70s yeah. was when hematology first started to use DMSA frozen platelets. And it was really to support patients who were alloimmune refractory to platelets in whom we had very small HLA matched donor registries at that time. So the thought was to wait until their bone marrow platelet production recovered, harvest their autologous platelets, freeze them and then retransfuse them when they got thrombocytopenic again. The problem was that their marrows were so compromised right. that even when they recovered, they weren't making platelets at the rate of normal. So you could get maybe one or two doses of platelets to support the patient, but that was not nearly enough to get a patient through a period of chronic thrombocytopenia. So I basically gave up. So why after all this time are you back at it again? Well, it's very interesting. The military asked me to come back to Washington, D.C. about five or six years ago and said, we don't have any platelets for our soldiers. I said, how can we, how can we not have any platelets for our thrombocytopenic soldiers who are bleeding, undergoing battlefield trauma? That's crazy. So... Uh, that kind of started the resurgence in looking for something that would last more than five to seven days, which is how long we can currently store platelets at room temperature in plasma. And so that started the journey of going to see if we could resurrect DMSO frozen platelets. So what are you presenting here? Well, what we're presenting here is the first dose response transfusion study in thrombocytopenic patients. And as you can imagine, frozen platelets are very crumbly. So the FDA, I think it's safe to say, is frantic that if you freeze platelets and some of them are just little microparticles now, you are going to induce clotting. Right. So you kind of say to yourself, oh yeah, we, <laughs> we want to induce clotting, but of course the FDA is concerned that you're going to get a heart attack or you're going to get a stroke or you're going to get something else. So, so this is the first uh, transfusion trial uh, in a long time. It's a half a dose of uh, DMSO frozen platelets. That's what we started with, given to five subjects. Then we went to a full unit. Then we went to two frozen apheresis platelet units. And then 
three frozen apheresis platelets, and I had previous, before we even started this, reviewed the world's literature on what had happened with the MSO frozen platelets before, and I couldn't even find a case report <laughs> of a thrombotic event, and sure enough, uh, we've now infused 28 patients with increasing doses and have found no uh, adverse uh, clotting events. And interestingly, because they're highly activated from the freeze-thaw process, their ability to, ca to control bleeding is much better than standard platelets. And in fact, the FDA said to us, you have to have given standard platelets to these patients. They still have to be actively bleeding before you can give them a CPP transfusion. And sure enough, uh, gosh, about 60% of the patients had improvement in their bleeding and the rest of them stabilized. And in fact, there were four out of seven patients who had CNS bleeding, who got significantly better. And one guy, it was like, got up out of bed the next day and walked out the door. And he, they had basically thought he would not survive. So it's a very exciting study in the sense that we didn't see any thromboembolic complications. And in patients who were actively bleeding, 60, 70 percent of them improved, including patients who were having life-threatening bleeding. So it's a very significant improvement. It's designed to be used when you know, standard platelets are not available or they have not been effective about controlling breeding. So it's really an exciting advance. Uh, on the basis of this study, we're going to go ahead with a um, clinical trial in cardiac surgery patients and monitor blood loss from chest tubes post-surgery in patients who've either been given standard platelets or cryopreserved platelets. And so the military is ecstatic, as are the lumberjacks in my state of Washington out in the dingle. Oh, absolutely. Who a tree falls on them and they need something to work right now. So that's what the study's about. And uh, So the DMSO we're... gives you a, quite a shelf life. Oh, these products have been shown to be, um, have a shelf life of at least two years. And the interesting thing is these cryopreserved platelets were started by a guy named Bob Valeri, Dr. Bob Valeri, who was at the Naval Research Institute in Boston for a long time. And the advantage of the current iteration of DMSO frozen platelets is you get an apheresis product, you add the DMSO, and then you spin it down before freezing, remove the majority of the supernatant plasma, which has got the DMSO. So in the past, they used to centrifuge the platelets post freezing to remove the DMSO. Well, there aren't a whole lot of centrifuges out in Afghanistan. True. So we now spin down the platelets, remove the DMSO, put them in the freezer. Now they're in a very small volume. So you've got uh, a product which takes up a little bitty amount of plate space. Uh, you don't have to deal with it after you take it out of the freezer, except to put it in a 37 degree water bath, add a little saline, ready to be transfused. To yeah, it's really, it's, it's really quite interesting and it's gonna be a product which hopefully will be good for what it's designed for and that's to help 
um, people who are either actively bleeding or not, where you have standard platelets available for transfusion and you've uh, suffered trauma, et cetera, et cetera. So battlefield, obviously. Yes, would be, yes. You know, like you said, when you're, you're outside of the, the, the main and, and you're exactly. away from your, yeah, anyone exactly. who can help you. Yeah. I mean, the South Pole, they, they, yeah. they need at least yeah. a, a story yeah. of this. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, I was in a meeting with the DOD, Department of Defense, and, and the guy said, well, how am I going to, he said, I have to complete with tanks and trucks and yada, yada, yada. How am I going to get freezers? So they now have got a little, like, uh, those little small icebox things yeah. that they can deploy. And because of the volume that we're now using, they can uh, put a lot of platelets in a small space and... Uh, Hopefully they've got some electricity to keep it cold, but it they can be stored for at least two years that we know of and probably longer. So clinical trials are next. Clinical trials are next. And we'll have data in two years? Probably two years. Yeah, they're planning to start ASAP. They've already got the, uh, the uh, coordinating center set up. They want to get 18 cardiac surgery units across the country to enroll patients. I've already talked to my cardiac surgeons at the UW in Seattle, and they are very excited to be involved. And so it's going to be, it's, it's really a game changer at a time when the military really needs a game changer. Yeah, absolutely. This is one of many exciting pieces of, of uh, news out of this meeting, but this is one I just had to sit down and talk oh, to you about. because I remember you. DMSO for so many years ago, and I was like, there's something new, and this is exciting. <laughs> so you've made my day. Thank okay, you very much. thank you. We have a lot of stories from uh, this meeting. Please, up online as well as in Ash Clinical News. For whom? I'm Rick McGuire.